Can M2 Mac Mini with 16 gigabytes of unified memory replace my three years old PC for DaVinci Resolve edits? Now I'm equipped with the knowledge to answer this question with 100% certainty. The simple and quick answer is no. If you think about getting Basic M2 for 4K editing, then I do not recommend this. If you want to know more details and know if it's possible to use this Mac with 4K, then watch the whole video. I've painted the picture of my expectations in the last video, link here. I just want a fluid 4K timeline experience in DaVinci Resolve. I can accept working with a half resolution timeline, but I want my color grades to be visible on the edit page, all the transitions and fusion clips even pre-rendered too, and still get a smooth timeline at 25p. My PC struggles sometimes, especially if the footage is H.264 long GOP. My current workaround is to use Atomos and record ProRes 422. Downside is huge files and loud Atomos, which is available in the footage and really hard to remove in post. Also, not all color grades are smooth on my timeline. Some clips graded with the Hanser or Film Convert do not play smoothly, especially with the grain applied. It varies from the version to version of DaVinci and plugins. Sometimes it's kinda smooth, sometimes it's not. So with my setup, which is Ryzen 7 2700X, 32 gigs of RAM and RTX 2070 with 8 gigs of VRAM, it is just on the verge of being okay. Another problem is related to more demanding video effects like noise remover, the flicker, and again, the enhancer. If I use two of these on the timeline, then there is a big risk this will either fail during the render or in some cases it crashes DaVinci due to depleted VRAM, even while I'm just scrubbing the timeline. So based on the YouTube reviews, I got M2 Mac Mini, but I got the base version with 16 gigabytes of unified memory and 10 gigabit NIC because I mainly edit from my NAS. Baseline 256 gigabytes SSD, which is slower, is not a problem for me when I got this 10 gigabit network card, cause I will use this internal storage only for the apps, video footage would be on the NAS. So now I've edited the last video on M2 Mac Mini, plus few shorts for my other channels, and I know how good bad M2 Mini is. So I've edited part one of this video on my M2 Mac Mini. It's a 4K ProRes 422 10-bit recording from my Sony A7 IV. ProRes is generally less demanding for the system to play it smoothly. And if you read Apple ads of M2 computers, you will see they only refer to ProRes streams. That's why I've been able to edit this simple timeline without any problems on the Mac. But since I record S-Log3, then after my cuts were done, I wanted to apply color grades, and this is where the struggle started. When the enhancer has been applied, the video became choppy, and even a simple smooth cut transition started to lose ton of frames. So I had to use a workaround. Since all the clips were lit the same way, I just created one color grade with the enhancer and exported it as a LUT from the plugin. Then I applied the light to all the clips and it worked to an extent. There were some stutters here and there on the timeline, but it went generally okay. Changing timeline proxy resolution to half-sized also helped, but generally Mac was unable to smoothly play the 4K ProRes timeline with the Hanser color grade applied. So it's a big thumbs down here. GPU seems to be the reason because it was utilized at 100%. CPU cores still got a headroom. The plus was that it never swapped during that edit and memory was usually used up to 14 gigabytes. This means it might be a resolution for this insufficient VRAM problem on the PC. I've seen some swapping using DaVinci, but I was running two performance monitoring apps which were eating some resources too. 
So on a 16 gigabytes unified memory Mac, I shouldn't experience the problems with depleted VRAM. So I won't get crashes of the DaVinci or stopped renders. And the whole project has been rendered in four minutes and 45 seconds. But then the same project has been much smoother on my PC. I've been able to edit the 4K timeline with the Dehancer on. The LAT trick was not necessary, but the render took seven minutes and four seconds. And this is because the PC does not have a hardware support for ProRes encoding or decoding. Then I've created another 4K timeline with some random B-Row, ProRes Row, DNX, HAVC and H264 clips, which are in my usual workflows. B-Row was 6K Q5, the rest clips 4K. And my PC is able to play them all smoothly without the color grades. Then with color grades, it depends. In most cases, film convert is okay, the answer is not smooth with the grain applied. Sometimes this happens for Film Convert 2 when I play the grain. I've also experienced lack of smoothness before on my other timelines with H.264 and the answer grades without grain applied. The strange thing is when DaVinci struggles with the playback, CPU and GPU aren't utilized at 100% and the storage is also doing okay. Maybe it is just a monitoring issue on maybe the dehancer is not very well optimized. But on the Mac, even the part without the color grades cannot play smoothly through the smooth cut transition on the full resolution timeline. It cannot play the color graded clips in full resolution and even most of them in half resolution timeline proxy mode. So it seems that Geekbench results are not lying. The M2 GPU seems to be three times slower than my three years old and actually RTX 2070 is four and a half years old GPU. But Mac is definitely very power efficient. When scrubbing through the timeline, it draws 10 to 18 watts while the PC draws 120 to 220 watts, so around 10 times more. And during the rendering, Mac drew up to 29 watts while PC was consuming up to 280. So performance per watt of Mac is amazing, but overall performance is too low for my expectations. So definitely Mac goes back. I cannot justify having a $1,000 computer just to do simple desktop tasks. And also it's not possible to get Polish letters on this Mac. I went through the support forums, done what's needed, still does not work. What are my alternatives? I can accept the flows of my PC, but sometimes it's really annoying and time consuming. For example, if your render takes 30 minutes and fails 29 minutes in. So I would like to avoid this scenario. M2 Pro GPU is two times faster than basic M2 tops. So base case scenario, if M2 Pro Mac Mini can offload some workload to the hardware encoders and decoders, it will get the same performance as my PC and it will cost 1400 USD for the base 16 gigabytes, 10 CPU and 16 GPU core version with 10 gigabit NIC. So it doesn't make any sense to get it, even if it uses 40 watts of energy. Maybe since it also got two times faster memory, it could be a bit faster than my current PC, but I guess I would have to go with the 12 CPU, 19 GPU cores version for this to happen. Then the price is 1800 USD, which is close to M1 Max Studio, with half terabyte drive and 32 gigs of RAM. If I want more performance, I will probably have to buy the M1 Max or M2 Max based MacBook Pro. 14 inch base M2 Max MacBook Pro is 3100 USD. It does not make any sense financially, but maybe I'm just too poor. And also M2 Max 38 core GPU got around 75,000 OpenCL score in Geekbench 5 which means it might not be faster than my RTX 2070, which got 91K. I guess my needs are kinda niche. Most of the YouTube people just use LUTs to color grade. If you are that person, I guess M2 Pro will be okay. If I haven't got my PC already, this will be probably my computer of choice anyway. 
I also got three alternatives from NVIDIA, RTX 4070 Ti with 12GB of VRAM, which is kinda risky in terms of VRAM amount, but it's just 780 bucks in Poland without the tax. The RTX 4080 16GB should be fine for the performance and VRAM memory depletion problem. It is $1180 here in Poland, so 180 USD more compared to M2 Mac Mini I've got. And RTX 4090 24GB, it is $1640 here. I can write off the tax since it's my company's expense, that's why I'm talking about taxless prices. And there is also RTX 4080 Ti 20GB around the corner, but the price will be stupidly high, at least for a few first months. And used RTX 3090 with 24GB of RAM is also an option, it is less than 760 bucks here, but the problem is that most of them were used in my new rigs, working 24-7, so if there's no warranty, you might be screwed quite fast. They are cheaper than the RTX 4070 Ti and performance is similar, but there is 24 gigs of VRAM. The only drawback is lack of the AV1 encoder, which is in dual version in any RTX 40 series. And AV1 is the future of video sharing and streaming. So I guess it's better to have AV1 hardware encoder. I'm not saying that M2 Mini is a bad computer, what is impressive about it, it can do a lot of tasks, even some basic 4K edits with a great power efficiency. It draws 6 to 8 watts in usual desktop tasks. Although I've been a bit suspicious, it also draws some power via USB-C from the monitor, but seems not, because when I disconnected the monitor, power draw level stayed the same. It is also completely silent. M2 Pro Mac Mini is not at least based on the YouTube reviews. M2 Mini works with all my peripherals except advanced functions of my mouse. And it also recognizes both of my monitors while one of them is 13 years old and both monitors works with 60 Hz, which is their max. Mac OS is cute looking if you pay attention to such things, I don't. So actually if your camera is able to record directly to ProRes, then you should be fine editing even on a basic M2 Mac Mini, although I recommend 16GB of unified memory for that. Some Panasonic cameras got ProRes support natively, so if you, for example, got a Panasonic S5 2X, you can record to ProRes via the USB, then you can just connect the drive to the Mac and edit of the drive without the need to copy the files. But it's a quite expensive solution, although if you plan to get or already have a camera with a ProRes support, then that's an option. Most of the cameras that can record ProRes are kinda expensive, so not a very budget-friendly solution. Another kinda related topic for me is that unfortunately my 11 years old laptop is dying for the fourth time, so light and power-efficient laptop will be a nice buy. I'm considering one of the M1, M2 Airs, but they have their flaws, unfortunately, and Apple is amazing in upselling stuff. Because, for example, M2 Air price with 16 gigabytes of unified memory is quite close to the entry-level M2 Pro MacBook, but then you need to upgrade the drive of the MacBook to one terabyte to get the full speed, and maybe unified memory to 32 gigs to be future-proof, and now you are facing a really high price. Definitely in the laptop department there is nothing better than the M1, M2 based MacBook Pro, at least for DaVinci. But also listen carefully to the reviews and read the Apple materials with the caution because I've seen the video when the reviewer said her M2 Pro, MacBook Pro, can fly through any timeline but then showed her M2 being specked out M2 Max. So if I haven't got my desktop PC to upgrade, I will probably get an M2 Pro Mini with 16 or 32 gigs of RAM to be more future-proof, but since I got the PC, the M2 Mini or M1 Studio does not make any sense. 
So for me, the solution for dying laptop and the problems with the depleted VRAM might be M2 or M1 based MacBook Pro. But I guess the price is kind of too high to get it. So I will think about it. What solution is better? Either to get the RTX 4080 and cheaper laptop or maybe follow the route with the more expensive M2 or M1 based MacBook Pro. If I want to justify it from the energy usage and cost perspective, so I pay 21 cents per kilowatt hour. My PC uses around one kilowatt hour a day tops, which gives 30 and a half kilowatt hour a month on average, which is less than $7 for electricity a month. If I get 4080, I will use two kilowatts hours a day, which is around 61 kilowatts hour a month tops, which is 13 bucks for electric energy. If I get the M2 Max, it will use a maximum 15 kilowatt hours, probably less, if use the same amount of time than the PC. So I will save 10 bucks tops a month. So $2,000 difference in the price between RTX 4080 and M2 Max, which is not spec'd out, will pay itself within just 200 months, which is 16 years and 8 months. So it doesn't make sense from the financial perspective, at least for me. But if you're located in US, then M1 MacBook Pro is a good alternative for you. It is not in Poland because they do not exist here as new or refurbished. And if they are, the prices are even higher than M2 counterparts, so it is totally stupid to buy here. Instead, it's a different story, so you got another alternative there. Looks like Mac computers totally do not make sense financially in Poland. Of course, I mean if I use them 90% of the time for resolve editing. For other purposes, it might make a lot of sense. For me, I get more performance per my back from the overpriced NVIDIA RTX 40 series. So big noisy box under my desk stays. You can still use my Amazon affiliates if you want to buy M2 Mac anyway or any other video gear I used. Links are in the description down below. And I guess that's it. Cheers, mate.